Hello, I'm Lewis from DIY Machines. Now, I've always wanted to design and build my own 3D printable robot vacuum cleaner, but was never really sure where to start. Then, just the other day, Yuffie reached out to me and asked if I would review one of theirs. I said sure, but on the proviso that I'd be allowed to take it apart on camera to see how one actually works. Being the good sports they are, they've agreed to this and now I have one. They also suggested that I should probably test the unit before I took it apart into pieces just in case I wasn't able to put it back together again. Um, you can see how that went at the end of this video. So in this video, we will take a look at the Eufy Robovac X8, set up some tests to see how well it works and lift the lid and examine how it works so that we can make our own 3D printable one later in the year. If you're watching this video far in the future and I've already attempted my 3D printable version of this, then you'll find a link to it on screen now and in the video's description. So very quickly, what's inside the box? Well, on the top is a packet containing your quick start guide and other useful documents. Under this is the Hoover itself, a nice and compact charging dock, a power supply suitable for your country, a spare edge clearing tool, some handy cable tidies to help prepare your home for its new guest, and a spare dust filter. So I've already completed my review of how well this vacuum cleaner vacuum cleans my house. But before I show you those results, we should have a look at some of the technology that is inside this robot vac and how it uses it to understand and traverse its environment. And we'll see what we can learn for designing one of our own. The first part and perhaps the most simplest is this bumper here on the front. This front bumper can detect when it hits an object anywhere in the front half of the robot vacuum cleaner. Let's take a closer look. So this one appears to use these two metal tags here as springs for the bumper, which when pressed, triggers these switches either side of the front. Simple but effective. The next thing we'll notice when we look on the underside of the robot are the four infrared photo sensors that it uses to detect if it's about to leap itself off the edge of a staircase. Certainly something you don't want your new pride and joy to do. That's these four modules here. They'll use a similar technology to the TCRT 5000, to which I've made a separate video about. So if you want to learn a little bit more about how these work, then check out the video I've linked to at the top at the moment. You'll also find a similar infrared sensor on the right hand side of the Robovac. This one is used to help the Robovac stay parallel to a wall. The next thing we can see are these two metal contact plates which are used when the robot vacuum cleaner drives itself back to its charging station. These make contact with the two points on the station itself. The next and perhaps the most immediately visible sensor is the LiDAR sensor housed in this pillar on top. So LiDAR stands for light detection and ranging and it's fairly advanced technology. You'll often find it used on autonomous vehicles for example. This no contact sensor helps the Robovac to recognize and map its location with precise laser measurements and drives its AI map 2.0 intelligent planning without the need to always knock into objects with its bumper. It does this using a laser that spins around very quickly and a receiver which measures the time it takes for the projected laser light to hit a object of some description and then return back to the sensor. The AI Map 2.0 technology is quite impressive, but we'll go over that later. For now, we're gonna keep looking at some more of this hardware. So what sensors can we include in our 3D printable robo vacuum cleaner? Well, obstacle detection and stair detection are essential. LiDAR would be absolutely lovely to have, and though its price is continuing to fall, it's still a little bit pricey. 
and more importantly for me, it requires some good programming to make sense of the data and measurements it brings into the system. This is beyond my abilities, but we certainly can use infrared sensors and bump sensors to have a fairly good ability to navigate the environment. So any robo vacuum cleaner continually plugged into the mains whilst it tried to vacuum would be an absolute nightmare, which is why of course this one has a lithium ion battery pack. The battery pack found in the X8 is a 14.4 volt 5200 milliamp hour pack. The 4S2P written here on the battery pack also tells us that there are two parallel rows of four cells on the inside which gives us eight cells connected like so. This allows the X8 to hoover for about two and a half hours, which has been more than enough time for me in my home. Now we'll almost certainly use a lithium ion battery in our robot, but until we've worked out the motors, sensors and power requirements, we won't be able to work out how many cells and in what arrangement would be appropriate for hours. So we'll figure that out later. Yuffie are proud of the fact that this is their first vacuum cleaner to feature a twin turbine and dual cyclone suction system. In fact, they say it's the first in their industry. If we continue to remove the case, we can see how this works. Now to get on the inside of the case, I've had to take this off. So I was gonna show you this for a second. This is a rubberized flicker bobby, I'll call it, <laughs> which is used as the robot drives alongside the wall to flick the debris into its own path when it comes back around for its next pass. Ta-da, we're on the inside. Uh, in case you're curious, there were two cables. This one here, which must be going up to the LiDAR system on the top. And, uh-oh. <laughs> and this one here, which is also connected to the control panel. If we remove the case on our robot vacuum cleaner, we can then see the two twin turbines that create the suction. So the roller flicks the dirt up into the airstream, which then gets pulled through the vents on the side of our dust collection container before being filtered out and then blown out through the side vents on our robot. The two turbines generate 2000 pascals of suction, which is an 80% improvement on the previous C30 model. That's quite a jump in technology. For the suction system on my homemade vacuum cleaner, I'll probably use these fans as found on many 3D printers. They're not too expensive and readily available. So the dust is drawn up into this compartment after the roller has removed it from the surface. We have a filter which ensures that we don't just blow the dust straight back out across the floor again, defeating the object. Here, Yuffie say that their Ultra Pack dust compression system means you'll get 127% more dust and debris into this container before you need to empty it, meaning you'll need to empty it less often. You'll also find on the container a handy tool placed on top, which includes a brush and a sharp knife for removing any debris or tangles from your robot should they ever occur. Now, I'll be trying several different filter technologies in my homemade vacuum cleaner whilst trying to find that balance between not restricting the airflow too much but also not just letting the dust straight back out of the vacuum cleaner. If you know of some materials that would be suitable though, please go ahead and leave it in the comments down below. That would be a great help. Thank you. So that's the hardware sorted, but these days you'll also need some great software to breathe life into the machine and hopefully give it some resemblance of being intelligent. So a huge advantage Yuffie has that I won't have with my project 
is their app and AI intelligence software, which they have developed for their Robovax. One example is the iPath laser navigation and AI map technology. This really improves the effectiveness of the Robo vacuum cleaner. For example, once it had finished mapping out my home on its first few outings, it's now able to clean systematically, resulting in a faster and more effective clean. It's also smart enough to be able to map and memorize up to five floors in your home. So you can simply move it between floors and it will still navigate around intelligently. In the app, you'll find several cleaning modes. The first of which is the automatic mode. This will have the vacuum cleaner cover your entire floor. The room mode allows you to select one of your rooms. And this is really quite impressive. As when it first mapped my home, I didn't have to explain where the thresholds for each room was. It intelligently worked these out. Even though there isn't an actual physical threshold or change in flooring between my hallway. Zone allows you to draw an area to tend to. And finally, the spot mode is great for when you accidentally made some mess. These tools all allow you to tell the X8 where you want it to go, but you can also use the virtual no-go boundaries to tell it to stay away from certain areas. Perhaps where your dog regularly knocks the dog bowl and leaves water on the floor, or where your children like to play and leave their toys out. This is quite handy as some other vacuum cleaners only method of marking a no-go zone is a physical strip, which means you litter your floor with these little markers. And let's be honest, you want the robot to fit around your lifestyle, not to change your lifestyle too much to fit around the robot's requirements here. Deep down, and probably the same for a lot of people, I am an incredibly lazy person. So if you don't want to do the vacuuming, a robot vacuum cleaner is of course the clear answer. But if you feel like you should at least lift a finger to help it out, then you can open up the remote control mode and drive it around from the comfort of your armchair if you like. Start remote control. And perhaps lifting your fingers too much? Or how about raising your voice instead? You can integrate the robot vacuum cleaner with home assistant such as and ask Alexa to set your hoover to go out and work for you. I was finding myself a little bit peckish after all of this work. So before testing the vacuum cleaner, I went ahead and poured myself my favorite breakfast, 44 grams of Tesco's finest oats. I was gonna go take these in the garden until, oh, oh damn, that was absolutely not supposed to happen. Well, let's make the most of these spill oats and we'll summon the vacuum cleaner to come in and clean up this mess after weighing its dirt container to see just how many of these oats it actually picks up. And we'll summon the X8 using its spot clean mode to clean up this mess using two passes which we can set in the corner of the screen. Well, the Hoover has completed my bidding and on close inspection, we can immediately see it has missed a few oats. 
Once complete, I reweighed the container and found it had picked up approximately 42 grams of oats and anything else that might have been on the floor. Naturally, 44 grams is what we were aiming for. It seems like the accurately named rubberized flickamabobby bobby has a tendency on a hard floor to flick some of the dirt past the area of the spot clean or to where the vacuum cleaner has already passed. I'm fairly sure though on its next scheduled clean of the entire floor that it would pick these last remaining oats up. Now we can test going from a hard floor onto a thick carpet, which of course the Ufi X8 doesn't struggle with going up the bump or back down either. Now the automatic stair detection. And yes, it's absolutely fine, which is good to know because you don't want your new toy to go tumbling down the stairs. I'm quite impressed with this and I'm glad it's something it can do intelligently on its own if you've forgotten to set a boundary. I am both impressed and slightly embarrassed by just how much dirt this Robovac managed to pick up from beneath my skirting boards. And I know occasionally it can fling some out of the way of itself, but 19 times out of 20, it will pick it up on a later pass. I also like the Boost IQ feature, which increases suction automatically when it moves from a hard floor onto a carpet or rug. This will help ensure it removes pet hair from the carpet, something UV say the X8 is now more than 50% better at thanks to features such as this one. And now that I've had this opportunity to learn a lot more about robot vacuum cleaners, thanks to Yuffie for letting me take one apart, thank you. I am looking forward to designing and building my own 3D printable one and sharing it on this channel as a project. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel so you'll get a notification when that project is shared and we'll pit them head to head with one another to see if it sucks as much as the X8, in a good way. You'll find some links down below this video to Yuffie's site where you can find out some more about their robotic vacuum cleaners and any promotions that may be available at the moment. Thank you so much for watching this video. Until next time, do some good and ciao for now. The LiDAR stands for light detection and rage, rage, ranging. The infrared ones are easy to procure and relative. Where the filter will filter, oh gosh, where is it? Where is the filter?